well, th truthfully, I believe it was a Memorex commercial uh, I, I, where he was playing out on the bridge. Right. Okay. That's the first time, and I took great notice. Who's that? That's really cool. In 1959, after 12 years of success, a great jazz saxophonist decided he wasn't good enough. Sonny Rollins dropped out of the music business. Night after night, he stood alone on the Brooklyn Bridge and practiced. For months, he blew his music to the stars. And when he felt the time was right, Sonny Rollins came back to his public. Since then, his records have earned the highest acclaim. And today, Sonny Rollins is, at last, good enough. Uh, the first album that I got of his, a CD, was Way Out West. And it was with, it was combined with, hold on a second here. The, um, is it, here is it behind me? Oh, here it is. It was, a, it was a CD, and it was this album and Way Out West together on one CD. Um, and I really dug Way Out West. And then from there, I just kept on buying everything I could on CD. And then um, past 10 years or so, I've been very much into vinyl. And so I have at least a dozen of his albums. What is it about Sonny's playing that, that gets to you? <clears throat> well, tone for sure, but I think more than anything, Sonny Rollins' rhythm. Uh... My favorite Sonny Rollins song is actually with, without a song. And the rhythm of that gets me every single time, just pulls me in. So I think, I mean, everything, it's all encompassing with Sonny, but the rhythm. I, speaking of Sonny Rollins, I want to just go to this. Do you know what show I was at? I was at the Carnegie Hall show with Bradford Marsalis. Really? Yes. I, I still have the review from the Village uh, Voice. And that that show, it was in the 80s. I, remember, I don't remember what exa year exactly. But at that time, Branford was the hot sax player. He was the coming up. He was the young lion. He was it. And so he and Sonny in concert, Carnegie Hall. My God. Now, Branford Marcellus, I'm sure, is a good guy. But Sonny... And it was, I don't know what, I can't go into Sonny's mind whether he was going to take him to school or not, or how much he dug the kid, how respectful the kid was to him at the time. I say kid to a man who's now probably in his 50s. But um, uh, Sonny was, I don't even know, I can't even describe how brilliant he was and great. And the kid looked lost compared to Sonny. The last time he was in town, which was at UCLA, I, um, I'm a good parent. I had to go to parent night at my kid's school. I couldn't go. I, had to, I bought tickets. I bought tickets, and uh, I gave them to a jazz pianist that you may have heard of, Larry Golding. So I gave Larry my, he thanks me all the time. I gave him my tickets to Sunny Rollins at UCLA because I went to my kid's school. But, you know, you got your priorities. I mean, that's, I mean, my kids are probably the only thing that can keep me away from Sonny Rollins. Sonny Rollins, if by some long shot you are seeing me say this to you, happy birthday and thank you for enriching my life on a deep level, spiritually uh, and also artistically on a personal, yeah. Sonny Rollins, saxophonist, you have completely influenced Jeff Garland, comedian, in my work. And thank you, and happy birthday. <laughs>